Department of Perinatology named after Alash Kozbagarov. Topic Anomalities of Labor. Plan of the lecture Normal Labor and Abnormal Labor. The main sign of childbirth is appearance of rhythmic regular contractions every 8-10 minutes. Normal labor activity is coordinated, which is determined by the signs. The wave of contraction begins at the bottom of the uterus, the angle of the uterus pacemaker, and spreads towards the cervix. Duration of the contractions increases in the direction from the bottom to the body of the uterus. And the strength of the contraction increases from the bottom to the body of the uterus. A normally developing labor activity is characterized by increased strength of the contractions, increased duration of the contractions, shortened pause between contractions. Here you can see partogram. Partogram is a composite graphical record of key data, maternal and fetal, during labor. Anomalies of labor is violation of one or more parameters that determine its normal development and course. Anomalies of labor activity is a frequent pathology of the labor occurring in 10-15 persons of birth. Even in absolutely healthy prima gravida, labor anomalies are detected in 9.6 persons of cases. In 5.3 persons of cases it's an uterine inertia and in 2.3 persons an excessive labor. Primary uterine inertia appears in 2-10 persons of labors. Secondary in 2.5 persons of labors. In women older than 30 years, uterine, uterine inertia is twice as often than between the of 20-25 years old. Complication arising during childbirth due to anomalies of labor, detachment of normally located placenta, bleeding, acute fetal hypoxia, require emergency obstetric care. Preliminary period, false contractions, false labor, characterized by the appearance of irregular short-term contractions lasting no more than six hours. The general condition of the pregnant woman is not disturbed. Classification of anomalies of labor. First one is uterine inertia. It divided on primary, secondary and weakness of attempts primary and secondary also. Second one is excessively strong labor, rapid and quick birth. And third is discoordinated labor. It divided on simple discoordination, hypertonicity of the lower segment, convulsive contractions, also called uterine tetany, and circular dystocia. Etiology of anomalies of labor. It divided on th three uh, big groups. First one is maternal factors, somatic and neuroendocrine diseases, the violation of the regulatory effect of the central nervous system and autonomic system, complicated pregnancy, pathological changes in the myometrium, uterus overstraining, general or congenital pathology of the myocytes in which the excitability of the myometrium is sharply reduced narrow pelvis, pelvic tumors, and anatomical stiffness of the cervix. Second group is fetal placental factors, malformations of the fetal nervous system, fetal adrenal aplasia, placenta previa and its low location, accelerated or delayed maturation of the placenta, wrong fetal position, incorrect fetal head insertions, and third group is iatrogenic factors. Pathogenesis of anomalies of labor. Firstly, the ratio of the synthesis of progesterone and estrogen changes. It goes to reducing of the formation of specific alpha and beta adrenal receptors. The cascade synthesis of prostaglandins and the rhythmic release of oxytocin in mothers and fetus organisms are suppressed. Disturbed relationship between the fetal and maternal prostaglandins. Decreases synthesis of contractile proteins and myocytes. 
changing of pacemaker localization, which begins to function in the area of the uterus body or even in the lower segment of the uterus. Diagnostic methods for anomalies of labor. First is objective methods. Second, external hysterography, also called tocography. Third, internal hysterography, it's also tocography. Fourth is radiotelemetry, cardiotocography. Fifth is external palpation of the uterus. And sixth is vaginal examination. Examining of cervical dilatation. Diagnosis of labor abnormalities, criteria. Counting the frequency of contractions in 10 minutes, the interval between contractions, the duration and strength of contractions. Estimation of the opening speed to uterine pharynx. Monitoring the progress of the present part of the fetus through the birth canal. Uterine inertia is the most common form of labor abnormality. Uterine inertia. This is a pathology of labor characterized by lack of strength, duration and frequency of contractions to ensure the opening of the cervix and the fetus to the move along the birth canal when it's matched the size of the pelvis. Primary uterine inertia manifests from the beginning of labor. The following clinical signs are characteristic of primary weakness of labor. Excitability and tone of the uterus are reduced. Contractions are regular, less painful. Contractions and then atoms from the beginning remain rare, short, weak. The frequency doesn't exceed 1 and 2 in 10 minutes. The duration is 15-20 seconds, uh, the contraction force is weak. The fetal bladder is sluggish, but its elasticity doesn't increase. The duration of labor increases. Women fatigue, untimely discharge of the amniotic fluid in 35-48 uh, persons, increased period of amniotic fluid leaking, the danger of sustaining infection of the uterus and fetus. Development of intrauterine hypoxia of the fetus. Diagnosis of primary uterine inertia. If within 8 hours or more than uh, it's from the onset of labor, the later phase of labor doesn't change to active. A diagnosis is primary uterine inertia. Here is partogram at the primary uterine inertia. First line is partogram of normal labor, and second one is partogram at primary uterine inertia. Secondary uterine inertia is the weakening of contractions in the active phase of labor, decrease of the tone and excitability of the uterus. Causes of secondary weakness of labor is depletion of the energy pot potential of the uterus with functional inferiority of the myometrium, scar of the uterus after surgery, artifact abortions, multiparous women, absence of dynamic of the uterine pharynx opening due to its anatomical changes, cicatrial deformity of the cervix. The presence of low-lying myomatose nodes which are an obstacle to the advancement of the head. Abnormalities of the pelvis. Flat pelvis, transverse pelvis, pelvis with narrowing the transverse size of the wide part of the small pelvis cavity, leading to the formation of extensive representation of the fetus head, asynclitic insertion of the head, clinical narrow pelvis. Diagnosis of the secondary uterine inertia. It develops most often at the end of the disclosure period or in the period of expulsion of the fetus. The opening of the uterine pharynx after reaching 5-6 cm doesn't progress. The pre precursor of the fetus stops advancing along the birth canal, stopping in the one of the flatness of the pelvic cavity. Here you can see partogram at the secondary in uterine inertia. First line is a partogram of normal labor, and second one is uh, partogram at secondary uterine inertia. With uterine inertia, contractions are rare. 1 and 2 in 10 minutes, short for 15-20 seconds. 
uterine inertia. Primary uterine inertia appears with the onset of labor activity. Causes of primary uterine inertia Abdominal muscle weakness, multiparous, obesity, infantilism, overstretching, bladder stomach in the size overflow, organic lesions of the central nervous system, trauma, myasthenia gravis. Causes of secondary uterine inertia Women's fatigue, severe extragenital diseases, severe pain, epidural anesthesia. Clinics of uterine inertia Extension of the second stage of labor, prolonged standing of the present part in the wound of flatness, hypoxia of the fetus and its death. Treatment of the uterine inertia Assessment of the condition for the woman. The use of uterotonic agents, labor induction. In the absence of effect, ending of labor by cesarean section. In the second stage of childbirth, the use of labor induction, application of obstetric forceps, vacuum extraction of the fetus. Excessively strong patrimonial activity is divided on quick labor and rapid labor. At prima gravida woman, quick labor goes to, uh, in less than 5 hours. At rapid labor, less than 4 hours. In multiparous women, quick labor is less than 3 hours and rapid labor less than 2 hours. The effect of excessive labor of the fetus, acute hypoxia of the fetus, birth injury to the, of the fetus, and street childbirth. The reasons for the rapid birth. Excessive secretion of endogenous oxytocin. The impact of the myometrium of biologically active substances and mediators of the autonomic nervous system. Noripinephrine, acetylcholine. Failure of the locking function of the internal uterine pharynx as a result of all deep ruptures of the cervix and its pre the presence of the isthmic cervical insufficiency. Treatment of excessive patrimonial activity in the first stage of labor, lateral position opposite to the fetal position. Excited state of woman, increased motor activity, rapid pulse, rapid breathing and increasing of blood pressure is a clinic of excessively strong labor. Complications of childbirth at excessively strong patrimonial activity. Ruptures of the cervix, vagina, perineum, disturbances of the pubic, pubic bones. Premature detachment of the normally located placenta. Development of uterine hypertension in the third and early postpartum periods, leading to the bleeding. Fetal hypoxia. In children, cephalogematoma, detachment of the cerebellum, hemorrhages, intracranial in the spinal cord, under the capsule of the liver, in the adrenal glands, clavicle fractures, etc. Discoordinated patrimonial activity is absence of coordinated contractions between different parts of the uterus. Thank you for attention.